And we've been able to use this technology to look at how bacteria in the gut switch on and off. So we've got the genetically engineered protein into bacteria. If you take away calcium, you lose the light. If you put the calcium back, you get light back. Uh, and we've been able to measure and obviously convert it to traces of calcium in live bacteria properly for the first time. And have discovered this toxic substance produced by the metabolism of bacteria in the gut when you eat carbohydrate, uh, which modifies the effect of insulin. And I believe this is the true cause of type 2 diabetes. I'm moving rather fast. It's also given us a mechanism um, which is based on the Darwinian principle of small change by small change. If you look at the growth of bacteria, calcium, all it does is no calcium plus calcium. It changes the division time by about five minutes. 55 seconds, 55 minutes to 50 minutes. Just 10%. Doesn't look very significant. But you can work out that if you have two strains of bacteria, one of which, which grows 10% faster than the other, within 24 hours you have 20,000 times more bacteria than the one that grows faster. So this is a mechanism that we've worked out because we've been able to use bioluminescence to study how cells uh, grow at different rates. I got me into cooking, so if you ever come to Pembrokeshire, I'll be happy to cook you a nice meal. And this is another bit of entrepreneurship that's come out of my work. Because we set up a spin out called Wellstone Press and wrote a recipe book. I'm aiming over the next few years to use that to develop educational material, hopefully that teachers will want to use and students will want to use. Uh, it told us something very new about evolution. Um, so it may be violent essence could be as old as 60 million, 600 million years for a fireflies in amber. There's a lantern fish which is kept at the Natural History Museum, which is 100 million years old. But one of the most exciting new ideas that I've had from this is I think it will lead us to one of the fundamental questions of evolution. What is the origin of a new enzyme? So to finalize, I've done 10 minutes. Um, so just to summarize in bullets, what are the advances made from bioluminescence? We've discovered, not me, but others have discovered one of the most important things in bacteria, or in the sense We've been able to measure free calcium inside live cells, and including whole animals. It's been able to image, to actually visualize the calcium change, which is a universal switch in all your cells in all nature. We've been able to measure things like ATP, which is a very, very important way of measuring bio viability, biomass. Uh, there's a company in Bridge End which sells huge amounts of firefly deciparase the food industry because they use it to detect whether they've got clean surfaces because it detects very small numbers of bacteria. It also, in my view, should be used to detect life on Mars. Whether we persuade it NASA or not, I don't know. Uh, we've got, we can measure other processes in live cells by changes in colour. It's used as a gene reporter, it's the best one. These are the species that are used to link it to a, 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 a regulatory element that you want to attack with a drug. We can measure oxygen metabolites and oxygen in live cells. It's led to these huge numbers of clinical tests. It's given us the green fluorescent protein in a billion dollar market. And it's going to be very important as a model indicator for looking at the effects of global warming and climate change on the marine environment. And it's given us a new idea about the evolution of enzymes. And I think it's a very useful educational tool and a tool for engagement. So we use it in the Darwin Centre in Pembrokeshire that I set up. Um, and it's been taken forward by people there brilliantly. And we run global months every year. And we've got a research programme looking at bioluminescence of animals that live in Milford Haven, which in my view is one of the best ecosystems in the marine environment in Europe for looking at the effect of climate change and global warming. So the final two slides are about bioluminescence and entrepreneurship. Uh, jellyfish has led to several hundred million clinical tests per year, uh, 20 million in income into Wales and has been out set up by my colleagues in Cardiff. Uh, 
Our fires led to a multi-million dollar market. The luciferases have led to multi-million dollar markets. This is used widely in drug discovery by most of the major drug companies. Um, it led to two spin-outs I set up, one for the technology, one for the education and books. Uh, and the green fluorescent protein itself has led to a billion dollar markets with different coloured indicators. And it also, I think, has a very great value as an educational tool. So how to be an entrepreneur? Uh, you need an original idea. You need to identify that it's part of a large market. It's no good making a gold-plated mousetrap because nobody wants to buy a gold-plated mousetrap. So you do need to identify there's a market there or that you can create a new market. You need to establish the principle by invention. Uh, you need to set up a company to protect and develop the invention. You need to patent it, although in my view, the patent situation, though our invention in Cardiff is, I think, the most successful patent that's ever come out of Wales, probably most, and also pretty well in the UK. I wouldn't go that route anymore because the American Patent Office has basically made a mess. And the universities are obsessed with ownership of intellectual property. You've got a small company, unless you work with a big company, you can't protect it. You need half a million dollars to start with before you can protect it against a competitor. I wouldn't go that route to protect the intellectual property anymore. Not for a small company. You need to find a big partner or license a, a, to a big company. You need to innovate to convert the in, in, in invention into a realistic product. You need to set up a manufacturing facility. Uh, you need to market it, of course, the internet gives us that. You need to continue to assess your progress. So the four key things for success are focus on something that you want that can be bought. Commitment, you need funding, you need a lot of hard work. So finally, the key thing is to remember about bioluminescence is all bioluminescence is chemiluminescence is a chemical reaction that makes the light by exciting electrons. It's not the same as fluorescence, which involves electronically excited states, but you do that by absorbing light. It's also not the same as phosphorescence, which the dictionary will tell you in common parlance that phosphorescence, the animals like glowworms that emit light, that is not correct scientifically. Phosphorescence is a type, scientifically, is a type of fluorescence where the electron spin state is different. So it's a bit of a complicated quantum, uh, quantum theory explanation. But it's not the same as bioluminescence. Uh, it has led to major discoveries and invention in biomedicine. It's established several billion dollar markets, completely surprising me for people that thought that those of us that worked with animals that flash and glow in the dark were crazy. It's a fabulous phenomenon. It's been a joy to work with, absolutely fantastic. And there's still a lot to be curious about. Even the babies can sometimes glow in the dark. I've even been known to glow in the dark. Thank you.